So we've skirted around mixed numbers so far and have now no other choice but to deal with them. A mixed number, as the name suggests, is a mixture of numbers that we've seen. Now, on an individual basis, we have had integers and we have had fractions. So a mixed number would be some combination of a integer with a fraction. And when we put them together, we just simply write them side by side. We usually write the mixed number as a whole number first in a larger size and a space and then the fraction part would be written in a smaller size. So like the examples that you have here, when we read them, we read the word and in between the integer part and the fraction part. So for instance, one and one over four, one and one fourth, one and one quarter, one way or the other, what that really means by having the word and in the middle is that we have adding. We don't want to actually have to go through any sort of technical adding process to be able to figure out a fraction version of that number. We'd like something that is a little bit quicker to handle. And so with a few steps, we can convert from a mixed number into a fraction. We're going to get what we call an improper fraction. The top number is bigger or equal to the bottom number. So we start out by taking the whole number or the integer that is out in front, multiplying it by the denominator. So in our example here, we're going to use the eight and a half, eight and one over two. The whole number is eight. The denominator is two. Eight times two gives me 16. Step two, we want to add that result to the numerator. So we're going to take the 16, we're going to add it to the numerator of 1. And then the third step, that answer is our new numerator. The denominator is the original denominator that we saw in the problem. So the original denom denominator of this problem was a 2. 17 on top, 2 on the bottom. Again, working through those steps and using the 11 and 2 over 3, or the 11 and 2 thirds. We take that whole number out front and multiply by the denominator. We want to add that to our numerator, so we kind of shorthand things here. And our denominator, let's go ahead and leave that off for a minute. Our denominator is going to be the same as the denominator we see in the original mixed number. The denominator is a 3. So 11 and 2 thirds becomes the fraction 35 over 3. We can turn a fraction into a mixed number. And that one you've actually already been doing without even realizing it. A fraction bar means division. So if you work through the division problem, you come up with your quotient and your remainder. And before, we would write the quotient and the remainder separately. But what we're going to do now is we're going to put them together in our mixed number format. So the quotient is the whole number part of our answer. The remainder is going to be the numerator of the fraction piece. And again, the denominator is the same as the denominator that originally showed up. So the fraction was 22 over 7. The denominator is 7. My mixed number has a denominator of 7. So for another example, let's say that we're working with the fraction 110 over 6, we want to convert that to a mixed number. What we want to do is take the 110 over 6, we want to write that as a division problem. So the 6 goes in front of our long division symbol, the 110 goes underneath. We go ahead and work through the division steps. 6 goes into 1, nope. 
6 goes into 11 once. 1 times 6 is 6. Do a little subtracting and get a remainder of 5. We haven't used the 0, so we drop that down. Now we ask 6 goes into 50 how many times? 8 times. 8 times 6 is 48. Do a little subtraction, get our remainder. There are no other numbers to drop down. Our remainder is smaller than the divisor of 6. So we've done as much work here as possible, and we can now go ahead and build our mixed number answer. Our mixed number answer will be to have the quotient come first, put a little space in there, our numerator, sm slightly smaller size, the denominator that we need is the same as the denominator of our original fraction. Are we done? Hopefully you said no, because the fraction that we see here can be reduced. Remember that we always have that issue with our answers. If we have a fraction in our answer, whether it was the only part of our answer or only a part of our answer, the fractions that show up need to be reduced. So 18 and 2 over 6 would not cut it because the fraction 2 over 6 is not reduced. 18 and 1 over 3, that is acceptable because that is in a reduced answer. Well, the reason why we talk about the conversions, other than we can, and other than they connect up with things that we've seen a little bit of here and there in the past, is that being able to convert between mixed numbers and fractions allows us to do calculations with mixed numbers. In order to do calculations with mixed numbers, and we're going to do a couple of examples here, Three steps. First, any mixed number that shows up, transform it into a fraction. The reason being is that, step two, we've got fractions. Whatever problem we have, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, we know how to do those with fractions, and we don't need anything new or different other than transform a mixed number into a fraction and Step three, if we need to take our fraction answer and convert it back into a mixed number, then we can do that also. But the majority of the work that we're doing is relying on what we have done with our fractions, what we've practiced out with our fractions, and we're avoiding trying to put anything new into the mix, mix that makes things more challenging longer, we want to avoid those kinds of issues as much as possible. So a subtraction example, a multiplication example. The subtraction example that we have showing up here, we have a mixed number 8 and 1 over 9. To change that into a fraction, we need to do the whole number 8 times the denominator 9, add in the numerator of 1, the denominator will still be the 9 that shows up, and that will end up giving us a fraction 73 over 9. The second mixed number that we've got showing up 4 and 5 over 6, follow the same procedure, whole number times the denominator, add on the numerator, the denominator of our fraction is the same as the denominator that originally appeared, so we get a 29 over 6. To keep on going with this problem now, according to our work for adding and subtracting fractions, we need a common denominator. We're going to find the least common denominator by starting with the largest denominator in our problem is a 9. 
6 does not go into 9. So we try 2 times 9 is 18. 6 goes into 18, which means that our LCD is 18. We need to take the fractions 73 over 9 and 29 over 6 and adjust them so that they will have that common denominator of 18. So first fraction we need to times by 2 on the bottom and times by 2 on the top and that will give us a 146 over 18. For our second fraction, we would need to times by 3 on the bottom and times by 3 on the top. And that would give us a fraction of 87 over 18. Now that we've got a common denominator in both of our fractions, we can put our numerators together. Keep our denominator the same and we end up getting a 59 on top. We know what goes into 18, 2. 2 doesn't go into 59. 3, 3 does not go into 59. If 2 won't work, 6 won't work. If 3 won't work, 9 won't work. And if those don't work, 18 won't work. So this is our fraction answer. If we were allowed to stop at this particular answer, then we'd be good to go. However, if our directions told us that we needed to give our answer as a mixed number, then we are not yet good to go. We would need to take this 59 over 18 and convert it to a mixed number, meaning that we would need to work out the division Working out the division would give us 3 and 5 over 18 so that would be our mixed number answer if that was the one that we were forced to give. For the other example, same sort of basic plan of attack, we see that we have a mixed number, 12 and 1 half, showing up here. So that particular mixed number is going to be changed into whole number times the denominator, add the numerator, keep the same denominator and we would get a 25 over 2. So now we have multiplying with fractions. Multiplying with fractions means multiply straight across. 25 times 3 up on top, 2 times 16 down the bottom. Unfortunately, there are no numbers that go into both something on top and something on the bottom. So we don't have any slashing, we don't have any reducing. We are just going to be stuck with the fraction answer 75 over 32. And if our directions let us get away with that, then we would be done. However, if our directions state that we need a mixed number answer, we would need to do our 32 goes into 75 and work out that we get 2 and 11 over 32 for our mixed number answer.